protocol for generation of stable cell lines. Provided by Creative Biomart. First, background. The generation of stably transfected cell lines is critical for a wide range of applications. It is applied to the production of recombinant proteins, gene function studies, as well as drug discovery assays. Stable expression of target gene in cell lines overcomes the low transfection efficiency of transient expression and produces more target proteins. There are two types of stable cell lines. One is achieved by eukaryotic vectors that harbor elements for episomal maintenance in the nucleus of a transfected cell. Another is achieved via direct integration of the transfected plasmid into the target cell's genome. Episomal stability is often limited, and episomal plasmid elements is often restricted to certain species, therefore integration into the host cell chromosome is in common use. Although integration into the host cell chromosome is a rare event, and for most purposes, clonal events have to be isolated, stability of the intended genetic modification usually is much higher. Major challenges for generation of stable cell lines are low transfection efficiency or integration frequency. Stable expression can be influenced by the transfection method used. The transfection method determines the cell type for stable integration. It is known that liposome reagents can be used to transfer DNA into adherent cell lines. While viral methods or electrotransfection are used to deliver DNA into primary cells, or notoriously difficult to transfect suspension cell lines. Unfortunately, viral methods suffer from several limitations, such as time-consuming production of vectors and safety concerns, while electrotransfections suffer from the low cell survival rate. In order to select stably transfected cells, a selection marker must be co-expressed with the target protein. The marker gene could be on either the same plasmid vector or a second, co-transfected vector. There are a variety of systems for selecting transfected cells, including resistance to antibiotics pyromycin, neomycin, DHFR, and glutamine synthetis. After gene transfer, cells are developed in medium containing the selective agent. Only those cells which have contained the drug-resistant gene survive. Depending on the scope of the experiment, several options are used for the generation of a stable cell line. A mixed population of drug-resistant cells can be used directly, for experimental analysis with the advantage of generating fast results, but also the disadvantage of dealing with an undefined, and genetically mixed cell population. Another option is to generate a monoclonal cell line. In this method, it is necessary to dilute the resistant cells by plating in 96 well plates, in such a way that culture is single and isolated cells. Subsequently, the cloning of single cell may be repeated several times to obtain 100% clonal purity. This culture method can be used for screening experiments or conduction studies by using a homogeneous and defined cell system. Culture conditions, such as passage, split rhythm, cell number, of your selected cell type, are critical for generation of stable cell lines. For optimal results, we recommend following the cell culture recommendations of the supplier for the respective cell type. In general, for promoting good proliferation and cell physiology, the cell line should be passaged two days before the experiment. Besides, cell passage should not be higher than 30, due to the possibility of interference with integration efficiency. Second, protocol. Susceptibility to G418 is different among cell lines, which many even vary with cell passage numbers. The selection condition for your specific cell type needs to be determined experimentally. Determine the minimum level G418 concentration, to guarantee the minimum impact to cell growth. Note that the active concentration of stock G418, can vary considerably from batch to batch. Therefore, we recommend testing G418 sensitivity for every new batch. The final plating density depends on the specific cell type and the G418 concentration. We therefore recommend matrix titration of G418, 
and titration of cell number, for determination of plating density in 196 well plate. 1. Pre-plate 100 microliter medium in each well of the plate. 2. Add 100 microliter of cell suspension, containing 4,000 cells per well to the first column. 3. After gentle up and down pipetting, carry over 100 microliter to the next column, thereby diluting in a ratio of 1, 2. Repeat this procedure for each consecutive column. 4. Discard 100 microliter from the last column after completing. 5. Add 100 microliter of G418 containing medium to the first row for a final G418 concentration of 1.4 mg per milliliter. 6. Add G418 to the following rows and decreasing concentrations of G418 in steps to 0.2 mg per milliliter. 7. Incubate cells at standard conditions. 8. Analyze cell growth by microscope. 9. If you observe cell growth in the wells without G418, it is reasonable to assume that those cells can grow out starting as single cells. 10. Choose the G418 concentration which is just above the one which shows complete cell death. For transfection, please follow the manufacturer's instruction of your transfection system. The important thing is to transfect the expression plasmid, containing the target gene, and the sequence for a drug resistance gene into your cells. We suggest setting a negative control of untransfected cells for selection. Besides, it is much better to check the transfection efficiency and integration frequency of your experiment with a GFP control plasmid. 1. After transfection, allow cells to grow and to express the protein for G418 resistance under non-selective conditions for about 24 to 48 hours. 2. Analyze for transfection efficiency 24 to 48 hours post-transfection by microscopy or western blot of your target protein and positive control. 3. Count living cells via trypan blue staining or other appropriate methods. 4. Using standard medium and the appropriate amount of G418 per tested for your cell type. Plate cells in a 96 well plate with different cell numbers per well in a volume of at least 100 microliter per well. 5. Incubate cells under selective conditions and feed cells regularly with fresh selection medium. 6. Cell clones can be analyzed or further expanded as soon as cells in the non-transfected control wells have completely died. 7. In order to help assuring that selected cell populations are clones derived from a single cell, another round of limiting dilution under selection is recommended. Once you have obtained resistant cell lines, you should expand the cells and assay your target gene, compared with positive and negative control. You can detect the expression of fusion protein by an appropriate analysis method, such as Western blot, microscopy, ELISA, as well as flow cytometry. Third, experimental outline. Design experiment. Design experiment and choose expression vector, cell type and transfection method. Choose the G418 concentration and cell number. Determine appropriate G418 concentration and cell number per well by matrix titration. Transfection. Transfect expression plasmid into cells. Please follow the manufacturer's instruction of your transfection system. Cell selection. Plate transfected cells and cultivate cells in medium with G418 in appropriate concentration. Monoclonal cell line screening. Dilute cells into 96 well culture plates in appropriate cell density per well. Feed every 10 days with selection medium. Analyze. Make sure to choose a suitable method for your application to analysis your stable transfected cells. If you want more information, or you have any questions about experimental protocols, and other biological knowledges, please contact us via email. You can also log in our website. You can find me at www.creativebiomart.net for more information. Thank you for your attention.